Hey friends, welcome to the Taking Your Next Step podcast from Collegians for Christ. Through each episode, we will journey together focusing on becoming better followers of Jesus. If you are eager, like I am, to follow Jesus Christ, then take your next step now by joining us in today's episode. So we're talking about the devastating effects that busyness can have on our lives. We've talked about how rushed and how hurried our lives are in our culture and how we talked about this can uh, have a terrible or devastating effects on our life. And we talked about busyness and sin can produce the same effect. Now, sin can cut off our connection with God. We talked about how busyness can do the same. Now, we want to take it a step further and talk about how, one, sin can cut off your connection with people, but busyness can also cut off your connection with people. Uh, People who are in sin many times will begin to retreat. They'll begin to get missing. Maybe you think of someone who you say, man, I hadn't heard from them in a while. I understand they used to have some trouble with this issue or that issue. And you say, I hadn't heard from them. What happened? You find that way, okay, they've gotten quiet or they've disconnected from me because that same sin or that same situation has come back up. Maybe they know how you feel or they understand by their own conscience they're, they're sinning. And so they begin to cut off people from their lives. And uh, busyness has the same effect as sin. You see, business cuts off our connection with people. Now, God wired us and God created us to be very relational people. Now, as relational people, we have to understand that God has also, as believers, given us a job to do. Mark 16, 15, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He tells us in Acts 1, 8, you're going to be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. We understand if we're going to fulfill the Great Commission, we're going to do the job that Jesus Christ has given us to do, that it involves being around people. It involves being connected with people. If we're going to preach the gospel to every creature, it means we have to meet people and we have to engage people. We have to speak to people. And we understand many times the power of the gospel uh, can be with a stranger, but we understand many times the power of the gospel comes along with a relationship as we connect with people, as they see our lives, as they see our testimony lived out. And so our lives as believers, being around and connected with other people is vital. And I hope you see how this busyness can cut off our connection with what is most important. Now, I don't know what keeps you busy, uh, but I tell you this, I can find plenty of things to, f- to fill my time. Uh, boredom used to be a thing of the past, right? Uh, you don't get bored anymore because we've got every digital device. We've got something to keep our attention. And we're going to talk a little bit on one episode about how our phones honestly are a great, great distraction and something that uh, fills in the noise in our life. And uh, we allow that to take the place of other good things. We're going to try to talk through that a little bit and try to give ourselves some practical helps there to, to help reduce that. But as we think about this connection with people and the fact that we are believers and as we're taking our next step, we're being apprentices of Jesus Christ, then we have to fulfill his last command. And that is to witness. If we're going to witness, we have to do it. We have to talk to people. And so we're very relational. And the business of life, if we're on the roller coaster 24-7 and uh, all we are is busy, 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 then we don't make time for people. And the unfortunate part is I talk to people and as I see things and as God has allowed me to live, I'm 42 years old and there's people many more years older than me, but I've been able to get a little life experience and I see this downfall, men or women both so busy that they don't have time for each other. They don't have time for their kids. They don't have time for relationships outside of family. Because they're so busy. You see, you and I can allow our schooling to become a busyness of life so busy that we don't take time to connect with people in school, in class, connect with people in our church. We're just so busy. Maybe we're so busy with our career, and you tap tap that on everything else we have, all the other hats that we're wearing, and we just don't make time for family, for people, people in church. And unfortunately, uh, many times church and ministry can, uh, people allow, it's not the church or ministry, I should say, but people allow that to add, to become the busyness and actually allow something as good as ministry or church uh, to take the place of what we're supposed to be doing in building connections with God first and foremost, and then also 
people. You think about somebody who does this, who works Monday through Friday, busy. They have maybe uh, if you're in school, you've got studying, you've got exams, maybe you've got a job, maybe you're the person who is, uh, you have a family, you have kids, you're working, uh, married, or maybe you're even a, a single parent, whatever the case is. But you're working Monday through Friday, you're busy, you've got other things to do, and then you're part of your church, and you're serving, and maybe the church has stuff going on on Saturdays, and then Sunday comes, and you're, you know, you're there to worship Sunday morning, Sunday night. Where do you stop? Where do you find margin for your life? Where do you find a little bit of silence and solitude? Where do you find Sabbath rest? You see, if we're not careful, we'll go Sunday through Saturday, and I have to be careful. I always want to say Monday through Sunday, but uh, I can grow up in church, Sunday being the first day of the week. So Sunday through Saturday, Sunday through Saturday, Sunday through Saturday, Sunday through Saturday, and we're tired. We're not emotionally healthy. We're not mentally healthy. We don't have time for people. And let's just face it, we don't have time for God. I'm just speaking from experience. I'm speaking from how life can uh, drag you in and put you on the circle, on the roller coaster, and until you're willing to jump off, until you're willing to make a radical departure, until you're, until you're willing to raise your hand and say, no more, it doesn't stop. And so as we're navigating through these episodes, I'm praying it'll be a great help to you as we get into our next episode of really practicing some of the principles, disciplines that we can implement. And it's not a lot, it's just a few things that we can put in our lives to reduce the busyness, to reduce the distractions, to help us to focus on what is most important. And one of those definitely is God, and the others we're talking about is people. Because the gospel is all about people. We think about the purpose of the church is to get the gospel out, but it's also to fellowship with one another, to be around people, to build relationships. And we get so busy, we can't do that. I hear all the time uh, from young adults that are single, you know, and they're praying that maybe God would lead them or they're praying maybe God would have them to, to remain that way, just seeking God's will. And, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for friendships, deep friendships, friendships that are lasting, friendships that are healthy, that are nourishing, that can really encourage them and fill them up. And many times they say people, and I, I just heard this recently, they're, they're too busy. These people are too busy. These people are too busy. It, would it be hard to believe that you and I are too busy to disciple people as believers, that I as a director of a college ministry that I've devoted my life to, could get so busy with the admin and get so busy with the uh, other stuff of life that I would not have the time to disciple someone. I've heard that numerous times from younger people. I'd love for someone to disciple me, but as I've tried to inquire, I've tried to ask, they're just too busy. Now, they may be. They may already be discipling somebody, so I'm not trying to fault, but considering that I hear that very often from young adults who desire to have friendships There's something going on, and it's our culture 24-7 that is driving this busyness, and it's cutting off our connection with God. It's cutting off our connection with people so that the gospel can't go forth. Discipleship cannot happen like God designed for it to happen. And you and I as believers many times are the most susceptible, guilty parties. The gospel is all about people, and busyness cuts us off from those people we're supposed to get the gospel to. As Believers were supposed to be witnesses to people in Jerusalem, right where we live, where we work, in our neighborhood. But as we come and go, come and go, come and go, and blink our eyes, and wow, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and we had no time for people. We go through the checkout counters. Oh, excuse me. We don't go through checkout counters anymore. We go through self-checkout, where we don't have to talk to someone, where we wouldn't have to engage them in conversation. What line do you find yourself going through? The one where you could actually say hello to someone? though you may have to wait an extra minute or two. Why? Because we're so busy. We're too busy doing what is not most important. You see, people have no margin in their lives today. And then lastly, we even cut off connection with ourselves. We become so busy that we cannot take care of ourselves. People today are emotionally hurting. They're mentally hurting. And you think about the statistics with anxiety, depression, suicide, uh, people with mental illnesses, Uh, All of that is just at a heightened state. Why? Because 
we're so busy, we're so distracted that we don't pay attention to what's going on on the inside. I've been there where I've had to work so much and so busy that you eat, you overeat, and you eat unhealthy just to fuel your body with calories to make it through the day. I was talking to somebody this past week, same situation. I, I know I need to take care of myself. I know I'm not eating. And I wasn't even saying anything. They're just sharing it with me. But we've got this, 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 and this, and this, this, and this going on. And my first question was, hey, how are you doing? How are things going? Busy, busy, so busy. And that's the common theme. You see, we're so busy that we silence the voice in our heads with the noise of busyness. Now, there's many different forms that noise can take. But ultimately, we're covering up our feelings, our true feelings, what the inside is saying with things and more things and more things to do. You see, that busyness silences the voice inside our heads. You know, that voice that tries to talk, that's always talking. If, you're, if your voice inside your head is like mine, it won't shut up, right? And sometimes you just need to, you need to listen, you need to scroll, you need to watch, you need to do something just so it doesn't talk because it begins to talk and... You don't like what it says sometimes. You don't like how you're feeling. And so we try to suppress those emotions. We try not to deal with how we felt about that situation at work or that situation with that person or how we're honestly involved in that sin, that besetting sin. And we just are now justifying it and giving ourselves a way out. And we just want to silence the voice in our head. So we allow ourselves to become so busy that it can't talk. But can I say this? Not only are we silencing the voice inside our head, we're silencing the voice of the Holy Spirit. God in us. Be still and know that I am God. You see, we have to be still in order to hear his voice. So we're not dealing with what's going on inside. So you and I many times are not emotionally healthy. We're not able to make uh, good decisions. We're not able to connect with God as we should. And, you know, we can only go so long without dealing with the emotions inside of us without cracking Without blowing up, maybe you have those moments where you blow up. I, I can be guilty of that. Getting angry or doing something irrational. Why? Because we bottled it up until you shook up a two-liter Coke bottle until it exploded, right? Because we won't open it up beforehand. I'll end with this. A study was done uh, by a professor at Charleston Southern University on obstacles of growth. And he did this with over 24,000 Christians and identified busyness as a major distraction from the spiritual life. He found this as his conclusion. Christians are assimilating to a culture of busyness, hurry, and overload, which leads to this, becoming more marginalized in Christians' lives, which leads to a deteriorating relationship with God, which leads to Christians becoming even more vulnerable to adopting a secular, adopting secular assumptions about how to live, which leads to, lastly, more conformity to a culture of busyness, hurry, and overload. And then the cycle begins again. So what happens here? We become more marginalized in our lives. We have a deteriorating relationship with God. We become more vulnerable to adopting what? The secular worldview, the secular assumptions about how to live. We jump on the boat. We jump on the train. We jump on uh, the roller coaster, and it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. That's what he says, and the cycle begins again. You know what was found out to be worse? Who was? Pastors were found to be the worst. So let me say this. Culture should not drive us. As Christians, we should drive culture. Now, it may not be just a quick press of a button, or it may not be quick as, a, okay, I'm just I'm not going to live a busy life. But it's going to have to begin somewhere. Because when you begin to slow down, you begin to do this. You begin to see things differently. You begin to evaluate things differently. You begin to do things differently. You begin to realize what is really important in life. And then joy begins to come in. Then peace begins to flood into your life. Then you realize, now I'm really being productive. Now I realize this is my purpose. This is why I'm here. Not all this other stuff. What was I even doing? So we'll take the next couple of weeks and look at some practical principles, habits, practices, whatever you want to look, call them, that we can implement into our lives to stop all the busyness and hurry that is drowning us. We'll talk about stuff like living a simple life, like taking a moment of silence, heck, taking a day off, uh, allowing some margin into your life. So join with us as we go into our next episodes then. 
Thank you for taking the time to listen. If this podcast has been helpful to you, please share it with a friend or subscribe to stay up to date on the latest episodes. You can connect with Collegians for Christ online for more information and resources at cfccampusministry.com.